so welcome everyone okay i think we we, we can start we already um wait two or three minutes in order to have more people joining we have already 40 i, will, I think we will have for sure more joining in the coming uh, minutes but um so welcome uh, to this um open air provide community call so this is a, a, a a community call uh, an online meeting uh, targeting all the, the open air content providers from repository managers increase uh, managers um, um, editors so all uh, those that are part of our infrastructure contributing with content so we have decided last year to start organizing these community calls in order to have you on board to provide us feedback uh, about the services that we, that we are offering via the open air infrastructures and also to have your contributions to to the development of the of the services of the the guidelines if the different areas that we we are all um, working in open air and and all the community benefiting uh, so um the idea of this community is to have it all um first wednesdays of the of the month is to mainly to share the um, the so I'm just asking also for you to mute your microphones and that I could you also monitor that um, uh, so the main idea is uh, to provide um, updates so to let you know about the the main um, developments that we we are doing in open air some novelties and we all we always have one main topic to to discuss um this this time will be on the on the on the this space crease uh, implementation for open air uh, but every meeting we have one main topic plus all the recent novelties and the recent news about our development so um I first I start. I'm Pedro Prince from the from Open Air from the University of Minho, and we are the responsibles for the provide service, uh, and we we are in charge of this community call with the rest of of the Open Air the Open Air team. So uh, and uh, uh, I will do this first part to tell you about uh, some good news that we have for you about the provide service and then uh, the main topic will be about the space crease and, and we will have um, uh, uh, our colleague Andreas from the University of Bielefeld uh, and uh, Andrea Bolini from uh, um, for science that will present um, uh, the implementation of the crease guidelines in, the, in this piece, in this space crease so what what do uh, do we have to tell you uh, this this meetings usually we we, we have uh, we are recording these meetings you can you can check later and uh, we are going to share also the the, the slides uh, so uh, as we uh, told you in last in the last meeting we are um, doing a kind of redesign of the, of the dashboard of the provide service and the the good news are that we are we are almost done in fact we have already a version in in um, in providing beta in beta to sh to share with you but the um, next tuesday on on the coming week on uh, on tuesday on the 7th of april we will put it in production uh, we want to to have some time kind of two weeks to test with some users but uh, we have this um ready to go to, to production and we are quite happy it was something that we really wanted to have we received several contributions and feedback from from users some um, and and we have redesigned it uh, also to align with the um, with uh, a new image a new branding in, in in open air but also to correspond to the those some of the feedback that we have received but we are happy to also to engage with some of of you to contribute to this two weeks of, of revision of this new new version so we are really happy and within this release we will finally have the validator for 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 Chris systems something that we are promising since mid last year um and uh, finally we we have it we we are testing it in in beta but we we will present it 
it's the first version we can say that it's a, more or less a better version of this validator but we, we will have it also um within the release of this um, production uh, of this uh, in production of this new version so next april 7. so for this uh, for this um uh redesign was quite important all the feedback that we have received from from you from different um, initiatives so some workshops that we have organized at the national and, and international level even if last year in the during the open repositories conference or in some national events that we have we have done and we have received some feedback and uh, based on that feedback we are producing now some some um, enhancements in this in this service but we want we want more so we want to have your contribution uh, we are quite happy with this version that we are going to release in the coming week uh, but we want to have your feedback so um, uh, between the 15 uh, of april and the, and the end of april uh, we will run um, a series of um, of uh, user tests uh, with our um, provide user board uh, so if we you are available to contribute we have already a, an interesting team of repository managers or other managers to contribute to this user board but if you want to contribute and we are here to also to invite you please um, uh, send an email uh, directly to me um, offering your, your help to, to to participate in this in this uh, test that we are going to run uh, collect your feedback uh, we are going to ask you to perform some some specific uh, actions using our new version of the dashboard and then we will um, collect your feedback and this will be quite important for the, um, the improvements that we need to do within this process we wanted to do of course in a better stage but we are pushing to have it in production because we we have three or four main issues regarding the communication uh, with with the uh, with providers that we want to put in in production as soon as possible so this is why we are moving fast from beta to, to production but we are using this april this month these first days of in production to to test some things and, and to quickly free fix it if, if needed so we need your help here please uh, contact me um I'm, I'm i'm giving this speech just to <laughs> convince you to contribute to this to this task is not a difficult task we will ask you for a meeting of an hour meeting to to run some 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 tests and then half an hour also to contribute uh, within a with a survey to answer a survey and then with some tasks additional tasks so it's it's not a lot of effort but but it's 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 quite important for us so we will have this new version um uh on the coming week uh, and we are happy for that and i just want to to share that the more or less the the new layout um that we are going to release we will have a completely new um brand in the in this service uh the home page we are uh, providing more information we also have a, an about page for those that are not part of the, of the service to understand better what we are offering uh, but but the most uh, relevant change i think it's um it's the 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 internal part so when you log in to the um, to the dashboard where we are we have we have where we are now offering really um uh, a dashboard um uh, view uh, so that we can you can manage and you can play with the data that we are offering so we are quite happy if if you want to to test it so we it's not everything done yet but you you can uh, access the beta uh, instance that we, we that we have so you can access access and you can already play a bit if, if you want but uh, it's not 100 percent what we are going to have in, in in production but you you can already test it tomorrow we will improve a bit this better version so you can you can wait until tomorrow if you want but please access uh, and you can you can see that uh, we so we are trying to to have a, a more friendly interaction more um, easy to use 
dashboard and um, where you uh, have some generic um, functionalities regarding the registration, the validation and the, and the notifications. And then we are providing all the um, specific information for each uh, data source that you have registered in your in your account. So in this case, I am I'm just sharing, a, I have a screenshot from the University of Minho um, dashboard where we have some some numbers and then you can uh, navigate through the, the aggregation history, all the metadata enrichments and the, and the user statistics. So uh, we are quite happy and I hope that you, you will benefit a lot from this new version and I hope that some of you can also contribute to this, um, to this uh, uh, new version uh, and the tests that we want to run. So um, now I, I will stop my, my, my presentation, I will come at the end, so uh, I will give the floor to my colleague Andreas from the University of, of Bielefeld that will introduce this uh, main topic. Um, so I'll just stop sharing because I think uh, Andreas is going to share uh, um, his screen. So. Uh, uh, I, I give the floor to uh, Andreas, um, and then he can introduce himself and, uh, and uh, Andrea Bolini also, and then introduce this, this main topic uh, that we are discussing uh, today. At the end, we have time for um, questions, um, for your comments about, of course, this presentation that we are going to have, but also about other issues that we, you are facing with, with Provide, so we have some time to 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 answer also about this this topic and uh, and other things um, from our our services for content providers. So uh, Andreas, thank you very much for uh, preparing this this uh, this main topic of the the call today. Thank you, Pedro, and thank you for the introduction um, to this community call today. And it's nice to see the new dashboard. So I think there's also some upcoming community uh, calls on this dashboard also. So um, thank you. And um, I welcome you to also to the fifth community call today from my side. I will have this uh, presentation um, together with Andrea Bulini from Four Science. And uh, he is certainly in the um, certainly in the community, um, and Andrea is the chief technology and in innovation officer at Four Science in Italy. Um, he is also the deputy leader of the uh, Zerif Task Force of Eurocris and a member of Core Next Generation Working Group and uh, long long term. DSpace uh, committer. So, Andrea, we are happy to welcome you here in this community call today, uh, especially in these times that Pedro mentioned in, at the beginning. So, my name is Andreas Czerniak and uh, I'm from the University of Bielefeld in Germany and we are responsible for the guidelines in open air. Especially in this task and uh, this topic here today, for the CRIS guidelines and in the last year we um, have uh, development on the implementation to compliant with the open air gui uh, CRIS guidelines. So our agenda for this main topic is um, a short introduction about the guidelines. Um, then I will take over to Andrea. Um, and um, for the Chris Zarif um, integration, uh, Chris Zarif overview, implementation of the guidelines in these ways. Chris, um, in this phase of the implementation in the last year, we have some pilots that we present here. And at the end, some conclusions, lessons learned, uh, and uh, space for question and answers at the end. So the OpenAI guidelines for CRIS managers have a long-term uh, evolution. It starts with the version one in June 2015 and um, 
refers to an older X, uh, X, um, uh, XML serif standards and in end of uh, 2018 uh, we release um, the actual version of the CRIS open air um, guidelines. Um, this has some minor extensions uh, from the version that's released in the mid of uh, 2080 and um, the most important thing is uh, to have more personal identifiers and the documentation is uh, improved uh, on this. So um, why we choose here uh, DSpace Chris or a DSpace and DSpace, the DSpace Chris module? Um, as you know, uh, DSpace is the most popular um, repository platform in the world and is, and is used in uh, many kinds of things. We have more than uh, 1,500 installations uh, around the world and um, that uh, in the DSpace uh, community, especially a module for DSpace, um, Chris, uh, for current research information systems that specifies this topic especially and um, extend these open source um, software um, and this is why we choose um, uh, why we would like to push these community to have the open air uh, guidelines um, as a standard out of the box in DSpace Chris. So um, the main objectives for the implementation in the last year was to realize these new guidelines for Chris managers as I said in the out of the box. Um, and uh, give the Chris repository managers opportunity to expose the, their information to open air and to use all services behind open air um, for your repository. So I will take over to and, and give the floor to Andrea to introduce or give an overview about the Chris Zarif format. We start uh, with a very quick introducing introduce to uh, introduction to the new Zarif format uh, for the Chris guideline. Uh, the most important fact is then uh, for the new version of the guideline, we have introduced a new serif XML format that uh, open to uh, cover additional entities compared to the version one of the uh, of the guideline. And uh, th the entities that are now covered are publication, patents, product, organization unit, people, projects, events, and equipment. So you can see that using the CRIS guideline, you have a much more uh, rich uh, graph of database of information that you can exchange with OpenAir. It's not only limited to research outputs, so to publication and uh, research data, but you can also describe your uh, organization, person, and uh, activities. The other important fact is that the new uh, format uh, reuse existing vocabulary from other community, most important from the, uh, the core community, so the core vocabulary. Using the CRIS guideline, the institution will be able to exchange the, uh, as much uh, rich data as possible. Uh, 
And uh, one of important thing is then uh, we want to keep easy the use of this information. So an improvement compared to previous to previous version is that now each record is self-contained. This means that when you expose your publication record into new serif format, all the information about uh, linked entity like uh, author, project, uh, equipment are embedded in the XML of the publication. This will reduce the, the need to uh, go over different endpoints to ask uh, multiple requests to build the, uh, the, set, the detail of the record that you really need. How we have done this implementation uh, in this space case? So one of the first tasks was to improve the out-of-box configuration for the space case. This space case has a, a flexible data model. So uh, you are not bind to a specific data model to specific entities or attribute, uh, but you can decide to, to collect information that you, uh, you really need and that you are able to provide in the system. But out of box, we provide a starting point, a configuration that will uh, match the um, usual needs of institution. So the first task was to improve this out of box configuration to uh, include all the detail that was recommended by uh, OpenAir to, to have a good uh, exchange uh, with OpenAir. The second task was to uh, extend the IPMH server of the space Chris to include other than publication, also the Chris object. So now with this uh, version, you are able to index in the IPMH server and so to expose to OpenAir also your project, person, organization, and so on. Again, has the uh, in this space Chris, in a Chris system, the information space is uh, very rich and uh, uh, you have many connected objects. It's more about a graph of object than a single record. We have extended uh, OIPMH mechanism so that we can embed information from linked object inside each specific uh, um, record. Uh, of course, we have provided a default mapping so that the information that are stored in the space Chris are exposed in a compatible way to, uh, to OpenAir. And all this effort has been implemented in uh, all the current version of the space Chris. So this is included out of box in uh, the space Chris 5, that is the most used version, the space Chris 6, but also in the um, ongoing development of the space Chris 7. So these developments are available in all the uh, present version of the space Chris. How the OIPMH look like uh, in the space Chris now? So um, in green, in this diagram, you see the common element that we share with the basic the space uh, software. So the space uh, deal with community and collection that are usually uh, used to create OI sets and have items that describe uh, usually research outputs. So publication, research data, and uh, patents. In the space case, we also have what we call researcher profiles that are uh, the person, the organization units, the projects, and some dynamic object that can be used to uh, represent events, journals, equipments, and so on. All of these information now are indexed in the OIPMH server. And for each of these entity, you get at least one OI document that uh, uh, technically is stored in the XOI uh, format. In this document, you have all the metadata and uh, uh, also information about uh, uh, BStream that are attached to, uh, to the record. 
Some important fact is that this space crisps also provide hierarchical uh, metadata. And these are used in this space crisps to uh, manage the ternary relations uh, problem. This is the case when you have uh, one publication, for instance, and you want to describe, uh, to collect all sorts of information about uh, uh, which affiliation was used by each author to sign the specific publication. So in this case, we talk about ternary relations because of course you have the publication, you have the person and you have the organization unit that are all connect, uh, connected together. Uh, other than uh, this embedded information, this special OI document also includes some um, dynamically generated content. Uh, more specifically, we use this infrastructure to um, dynamically detect uh, which is the serif type of the, uh, the space Chris entity that we are going to index. So that we, uh, we know that the research profiles in the space Chris are used to represent a person in the Greece uh, world. Uh, but also we know that uh, the dynamic object uh, journals uh, is instead a different kind of, uh, of publication for, uh, um, for a serif. Other than that, we provide a set of configuration files for uh, this space Chris that allow uh, us to, to map specific aspect of the open air guideline. Um, there are uh, some solar query that are used to create virtual uh, set, uh, virtual OIPMH set, because the, uh, the guideline mandate for uh, set for uh, each entity. So the open air guideline for CRISP manager requires to the existence of uh, um, person set where all the uh, person records are exposed, an organization set where all the organization unit records are exposed and so on. And other than that, we have a um, Excel sheet uh, um, file that uh, translates internal metadata structure of the space Chris to the uh, open air serif format. So the serif XML representation for uh, open air. This endpoint is available out of box in uh, the space Chris now when you install one of the latest version. And uh, you have a, a specific context in the OI DMH server that is named OpenAir Chris by default, where these guidelines are implemented. So let's go to explore some examples to make uh, this thing more uh, clear. We have an official demo for the space Chris available. And on this demo, you will find uh, uh, active the, uh, the open air Chris uh, game line and point. So the first example come from uh, uh, the guy line itself. So is a publication record. Uh, it's a publication record from the open air project. As you can see, there are uh, several author and uh, there is a reference to a project again, so to the open air project. So in this case, we have uh, at least one publication linked to one project and this publication is linked to several person. Of course, this person are uh, um, linked also to organization units, so their um, employment and the project has received some funding. So here you can see that you can access the um, OI representation for each entity in, uh, in, the, in the graph, starting to look into the publication record. So here you have uh, uh, the record in the OI serif format for the publication where you see a lot of detail about the publication, like the title, the publication date, uh, the volume, the issue, and other details that are specific of the publication. I have highlighted two sections. One is related to the authors, and one that is related to the originated from uh, element. So the authors element include uh, a sub element for each author in the publication. 
In this case, you will see the detail about uh, 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 Nikos horses that uh, include some interesting information. First of all, you have uh, all the known identifier of this author. So you have the ORCID ID, you have the researcher ID, the Scopus author ID, directly in the XML that describe the publication. This allow you to have a, a much more accurate exchange of information. But also you see that this level of embedding is uh, uh, not limited to, uh, to just one level. Inside the publication, you have the author, the author tag include information about the person, but also the person uh, information include element about the other entity. In this case, for instance, the affiliation. So here you see that this person was affiliated with the uh, National Hellenic Research Foundation. And you see uh, the information about the organization unit that is linked, but also information about uh, uh, specific affiliation records, such as the start date and eventually an end date and so on. The other tag that I have highlighted in the publication record uh, was, the, uh, was the originated from. Uh, this because the publication have a reference to the project. So here in this tag, you see all the detail, the most relevant detail about the project. So you have the title of the project, second generation open access infrastructure. Uh, you have some information about uh, the team that work uh, in this project. In this case, it was just a fake, uh, um, a fake person from our demo. Uh, but you also see that embedded are uh, funding information. So in the OICR funded element, you uh, find information about uh, uh, the funders, so the European Commission in this case, uh, where there are more detail in the embedded organization unit element, uh, but there are also more detail about the funding itself. So you have detail about uh, the received amount, the type of funding received, and uh, uh, this is also structured in a hierarchy so that the funding can include and be part of other funder uh, funding that in the case of the European Commission is the seven pro, uh, framework uh, program or thing like that. So this is the, uh, the Nikos record in, uh, uh, in the space Chris that you also have uh, already seen in uh, uh, embedded in the publication OI record. So, in the public page of the space Chris, we have a profile where you see that there is the full name, there are the ORCID, the Scopus, and so on. There is the information about the affiliation. And of course, there is also the uh, back reference to the publication that was authored by Nikos. Again, also the, uh, the person record is exposed as a separate uh, OIPMH record. So you can get the detail about the specific person also directly and not only look into the embedded information in the, uh, in the publication. And as you see here, the person record contain again the detail about the person, so like the, the family name, the first name, the full name, all the identifier, ORCID, research ID, Scopus, and so on, but also embed information about the affiliation and the organization you. And the organization unit itself also have a separate record on, uh, on the IPMH uh, endpoint. This also allow external uh, service to, to collect information that they really need from your Chris system. So if a provide, um, an investor is only interested about uh, um, your researcher, they can just grab the, uh, the researcher information, the researcher records from your um, from your system without care about publication and other entity. The second example in uh, in the demo is uh, um, about a data set. So what is named a product in the serif world. And uh, this product reference a project 
So this data set was, uh, was collected uh, for a project and was produced by some specific equipment. As you can see here, the, uh, you have the, the endpoint to access the IPMH uh, record for uh, each of these entity. We can see the detail about uh, uh, the data set. So again, the data set in the serif world is named uh, product. So you have a representation of this, uh, this record as an OI serif product where you have the type of product using the, the core vocabulary. You have the, uh, the title, the name, uh, the identifier, and you have the reference from this product to the project that is embedded again in the product record. And also you have the reference to the equipment. So here you find uh, uh, the generated by element that embed the equipment information that are also available as a specific uh, OIPMH record, an independent uh, OIPMH record. In the case of the equipment, for instance, there is also a reference to uh, the owner of the, uh, of the equipment, so the organization that uh, owned uh, the equipment. We have made this implementation thanks to the collaboration with three pilot uh, institutes, institutions in Europe. Uh, one was the Technic University of Hamburg, the, uh, the Hamburg University of Technology, uh, that um, uh, don't yet run the system uh, in production because we are solving some uh, final uh, issue with local uh, customization. Uh, at the other two institutes was the Cypress University of Technology that have already deployed the solution production. So this is a public uh, endpoint that you can uh, explore where you can access all the information about uh, uh, the Cypress University of Technology. And the same apply for the University of Trieste that have installed uh, the solution in their own um, open repository that is named OpenStar TS. And uh, the nice fact about the uh, University of Trieste is then uh, this endpoint is already used uh, by another project, Italian Regional Portal, uh, UNTFVG, that also is built uh, with this base Chris and uh, aggregate data from three different universities in, uh, um, in this Italian region. And this portal used uh, OIPMH, uh, server to collect information about, uh, um, to aggregate information about the University of Trieste with the other uh, university. So other than expose this information for this additional project, we have also implemented uh, an investor client that is able to grab uh, the content. Uh, we have some slide um, from the um, Eurocris meeting in uh, Muster of la last November uh, of last year that was the result of the pilot phase. Uh, the interesting thing about this slide is uh, what we, we and each institution learn during the pilot. So in the case of the Hamburg University of Technology, uh, we improve a lot uh, the initial solution because looking to their uh, very complex uh, data uh, with a lot of uh, um, local enhancement to the data model and uh, customization, we found uh, some discrepancy uh, at starting the data that was exposed over IPMH and in the data that was really stored in the Chris system. And uh, this analysis help us to improve the, the solution and uh, all these peaks are now included in, uh, in the current version. Uh, the Cyprus University of Technology has uh, adapted this, uh, this solution uh, with the aims to expose uh, their complete set of information to open air. Uh, 
as you can read, uh, uh, University of Technology of, of Cyprus have a lot of, of projects funded by uh, the European Commission and, uh, and other. So the benefit for them is to be able to expose this information to, to open air and they really look forward to, to see this information available to uh, the uh, open air portal. I have already uh, um, said something about the uh, University of Trieste. So, the um, University of Trieste is one of the uh, most hold uh, the space installation and the space crisis installation. They run science more than 10 years. And uh, um, one of the goal, the benefit that uh, for them to, to use to, this implementation is that they are now able to expose all their information. So not only publication, but also the research profile, the organization, the project, the events, uh, the data set uh, to open air, but not so only to open air. Uh, as I already said, an Italian regional project also use the same endpoint to collect this information and to create a regional portal of, of, um, for the research. So, uh, my last slide is about uh, the other connection that exists uh, between the space crisis and the open air. Um, this is only the, the last implementation that we have provided to uh, improve the integration between the space crisis and open air. Other than the CRIS guideline, uh, uh, the space crisis also support the literature repository guideline the version 3 as a normal space repository. But uh, the good news is that we have also implemented the, uh, the compliance with the version 4 for literature repository. And this is currently available as a patch for the space and the space CRIS. And that we have proposed to integrate in the uh, next minor version of the space. We don't know yet if they will be included or not in the this basic this space version, so in this space 5.11 or 6.4. Uh, for sure, this will be included in the, new, uh, in the next this space crisp version. So after the release of this space 5.11 and 6.4, the this space crisp version will include the support for literature repository uh, version 4. Uh, this space Chris also implemented data archive guideline version 2. That means expose your record, your data set in uh, using the data site schema version 4. And using this space Chris, you are able to, uh, to use the OpenAI project database as a, a, an authority during the submission process so that uh, but the researcher don't need to input manually the title of the project or the grant number, but they can just look up in uh, the OpenAI project database. And uh, also out of box, you get uh, uh, OpenAI statistic plugin already bundled with uh, uh, the Space Chris software. So the only thing that you need to do is to apply for an IPK uh, with OpenAI and add your IPK uh, to the, uh, the Space Chris configuration file. All these as aspects are uh, documented a bit on, uh, on the uh, Lyrasis wiki, on the official DSpace uh, wiki. Uh, but of course, documentation is always something that uh, can and should be improved. Andreas, if you are uh, still able to hear me, <laughs> I leave you the floor for the conclusion. So thank you, Andrea, and uh, uh, for this uh, awesome implementation in DSpace Chris here. Um, oh, I can see Pedro's slides at the moment. Can I share my screen, Pedro? That would be great. Please share yours. I know that you have two more, yes. <laughs> So, um, 
this was uh, also implementation what uh, um, in our feature rich um, uh, things in DSpace Chris at the moment. So um, this is a very good start to um, uh, set up DSpace Chris uh, in your, your institutions. And um, um, my last words to the implementation of four signs that we have seen is uh, that uh, four signs have won the tender in the last year. Um, to implement uh, these open air guidelines uh, for um, into DSpace Chris. So um, the next question question is: uh, You have uh, DSpace Chris up and running, and uh, how can you register register your Chris system in open air? So at the moment, in the production system and also in beta, um, uh, you will see uh, Chris systems registration with stay tuned. So um, at the moment, please, uh, is there another workaround for this? So we are work hard um, to get the registration up and running. But there are some implications there, and so in the at the moment, if you uh, would like to become a member, um, send an email to Open Air Help Desk at University of Bielefeld. You see the email address here, and um, the requirements. What we need from your site is uh, the name of the Chris system, um, your base URL. To the endpoint um, and eventually the sets that we can harvest it from you. So Andrea said there are uh, a lot of sets like publications, patents, uh, organizations, funding and so on, equipment. And um, if you like only that we that open may harvest uh, the publication sets and the patents, so please tell us uh, in the email also. So, um, but uh, um, we are in the phase uh, to um, enhance the, these registration um, with, uh, and we are uh, strength con um, strongly in collaboration with uh, Eurochris. And Eurochris has set up in the last year uh, a, a registration for research information system called DRIS. And um, here is a short screenshot from the Eurochris website and shows up uh, the act at the moment, yesterday, um, when I take the shot, uh, the Chris systems around the world. So you see here um, a lot of Chris systems in Europe. Uh, you will you see a lot of Chris systems in India, and I think it was uh, going up the next uh, coming upcoming months. And uh, we are um, would like to find a way um, with together with Euro Chris to uh, register a Chris system in open air. Um, so this, uh, what, what, I, what I'm said is this was a tender and there are some lessons learned and conclusions on this. Um, in, we have seen uh, over the time in the last year that we have some limitations in the guidelines and uh, we uh, refine the guidelines at the moment. Um, and um, it's uh, since um, it's now good to have 
uh, these DSpace Chris um, implementation in DSpace. Um, so you can uh, exchange your research information directly with OpenAir and um, you can also uh, use uh, the services um, in OpenAir for your uh, publications and uh, other kind of uh, records from your DSpace um, Chris system um, like uh, to um, get notifies from broker uh, about enrichments of your metadata uh, and so on. So in the community call in February, I think we have um, a dedicated um, presentation about the broker. So these discourses is really available. Um, and then UBSC license is open source, is implemented as uh, Andreas said. And um, if you have feedback for us about uh, the guidelines of Chris managers, especially we have a Google document without any authorizations. You can comment this Google docu uh, document and um, explain your issues that you have with the guidelines. At the moment, there are some issues there. Uh, please, you can also take a look on this and um, you see uh, what we are working on at the moment. Um, you can also send an email um, at guidelines at openairu for feedback uh, and also for um, we have the issue tracker in github for these uh, guidelines um, and we collect the information from the google document and um, work with the issue tracker in github the feedback channel for dspace chris is uh, also on github um, and is uh, under for science, DSpace and issues. My there is so, one question here to Andreas. <laughs> yeah, one moment. I, I will I will finish. In, okay, uh, I will try to to reply <laughs> to some question that I read on uh, the chat. But uh, again, I'm uh, sorry for the technical sorry. issue, but I'm not able to hear from your side. So it's a bit hard to do that. Um, I read a question about identifier for organization unit. It is something that uh, uh, can be done in, uh, in SELIF, but is not, uh, not available in the current guideline as an uh, actual example. So if you look to the GitHub repository for uh, issue that was uh, referenced before, you will find a couple of, uh, um, of uh, um, issue discussing how to express, exactly express this identifier for organization unit. Uh, I will put uh, one link in the chat that is uh, uh, this, poor, uh, this issue describes uh, uh, some of the identifiers that we are uh, looking for for uh, organization unit that of course include uh, ROAR, GRID, ISNI and other uh, common, um, common identifier. So you can expect to have this solved in uh, um, a next version, next probably minor version of, of the guideline. Okay. So thank you, Andreas. I don't know if you want to conclude something more about the, the feedback. So 
if you want to jump in just i'm sharing the screen but uh, but you can you can just uh, so we are already um, concluding this um, this community call but andreas do you want to add something else to, to finalize your uh, presentation these final remarks about uh, how can people contribute uh, to provide feedback or not so i like to thank you all and um, if you have any questions you can also send an email to Mayor help desk at university of bielefeld and um, as uh, pedro mentioned in the beginning so um, the chris validator i think there's a um, uh, this is not discussed yet at this webinar uh, this must be exceeded the time limit of this call we have one hour at the moment and uh, especially i think there's another dedicated call on the validate validation service and validator uh, in the provide dashboard community call um, and uh, this can not only focus on Chris system, this can also uh, also focus on literature guidelines and so on. So okay. thank you very much. And uh, Pedro, your floor. Yes, thank you. So uh, I think it, this is important. Uh, so we have a clear roadmap here for the integration of, of, of Chris systems in, in open air. So Chris systems are uh, also an important um, community from, from um, from our uh, open air community of content providers. So um, we are already uh, working um, clearly in a clear roadmap with all the repository managers from literature, mainly from literature repositories, but now we can also do this in a clear, having a clear roadmap and clear um, and tools to support also CRIS um, system managers, uh, having these use cases presented here and having all these uh, channels of communication in, in place. Also the validator uh, available in the, in provide uh, um, on the coming week. Um, so thank you for joining this call. Uh, I just want to highlight to finalize that. Uh, so every month we have these community calls. Next community call will be on the 6th of May at the same time uh, of past two. Uh, Central European time uh, and uh, I also want to invite you to if, if you are not uh, yet a subscriber uh, please subscribe the the, the content provider uh, newsletter so we are sending uh, every month also um, on the day before of the community call and if you are already a subscriber please uh, disseminate it through your networks at the national level this is quite important also to to have other people in your countries also to subscribe the newsletter and to participate in the community calls so if you don't have any other questions many thanks for joining this community call i hope that it was useful at least to, to know about some novelties important novelties a new layout a new version of the dashboard next uh, next week and about this important uh, uh, use case from the this space crease to have also more crease systems on board in in open air so many thanks uh, all and um, stay strong in this difficult phase for all uh, and, um, and and be safe okay bye bye thank you very much <laughs>